Good evening. Welcome to Wheel of Sports TV. Dick Herman here. Jeremiah Spillane back with us. How you doing, Jeremiah? Great. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Herman. Good evening, Wheel of Sports fans. Gino Gang on camera. And uh, we got a good one here today, Jeremiah. We do? Top two teams in the league, Gino. <laughs> All right. We want a good game, don't we? It's about time. We need a good game. We'll mention some of our fine sponsors yeah. before the face-off here. Congdon Coleman Insurance, Killing Real Estate, Nantucket uh, Pharmacy, Island Pharmacy, Santa's Rubbish Removal, Harbor Fuel, Nantucket Airlines, Peter Beaton Hat Studio, UPS Store, Nantucket Booster Club, Greg Rath Builder, Nantucket Tackle Shop, the Downey Flake Sherman Management, Brock Insurance, the Seagrill, Don Allen Auto Center, and we'll get back to these after the uh, face-off. So this uh, Nantucket's uh, undefeated in the league, Jeremiah, and uh, yep, St. John Paul comes in with a record of nine and five. Uh, we beat them by I think five or six goals over there, but um, evidently they had a non-releasable penalty. We scored four goals during the lock-in penalty, so oh, looking for a better game today. So there's J.T. Gambroni up at the faceoff. Came up from attack to play the wing on the faceoff. Nice job getting the ground ball. The Whalers go on offense. Alex Small substitutes on the fly. So Nantucket, what, 12 and 3 in this? Go on, only lost twice to North Reading, I believe, Dick. Well, the, wow. and, and, and there's a shot from Alex Small. And once to Falmouth. Right, so you're right. So three losses. So the goal for Small gets us underway here at 11.35. The reason why I bring that up is that in your absence, uh, Rick uh, was doing the game with, uh, with me, and he said... Uh, yeah, Tucker's not going to lose another game this year. They're going to finish 17 and 3. That was his prediction. But also, on the reverse of that prediction, Jeremiah, he thinks that Nantucket will not get a top seed, meaning well, that meaning that they'll uh, they might get a six, seven, eight seed. Well, I'm saying if they finish 17 and 3, I think I pick them for the top four. Well, funny you mention that because Chris Perry and I were talking about that before we went on the air here. Uh, he seems to think the Whalers might not even get higher than a six or seven seed. So, what? an important game here for the record. Uh, we'll see those tournament pairings. I know come out around right after Memorial Day. Well, that's where that's where uh, that's where uh, Perry's. Uh, I mean, uh, Perry. You, you mentioned Perry. Uh, Rick said. Rick said probably a six or seven seed. I'm saying 17 and three. That only gives you one home game if you get a six or seven seed. Uh, as opposed to you got to get up to a four seed to get two home games, you know. So right, but I think it reflects strength of schedule more than overall record, Dick, because the Whalers only play a few games out of league now, and uh, like we said, they lost twice to North Reading and once to Falmouth. Small loses the ball. He's right back up with it. Alex goes left, gets around his man, looks to shoot, drops the ball. So Alex got the uh, opening goal there, just about 10 seconds in. We've played just about a minute and a half. Here comes uh, John Paul. Devin Harding in alone. Wow. Shoots and scores. Give Harding the goal, 10-22, unassisted. He went all the way in from the midfield line and put it over the shoulder of the keeper to equalize at one to one. The rest of our five sponsors here, Joe Rapaki, CPA, Island Lumber, Cowboys Meat Market, Stover Engineering, Cam Appliance, Island Carpets, the Island, the package store, Conroe Electric, Valero and Sons Garden Center, Espresso to Go, Nantucket Seafood, Hathorn Guest House, Rider Electric, Kitty Murtogs, Outdoor Power, Just Do It Two Sport Fishing, The Dog Wash, Fairgrounds, and we'll continue that list in a few minutes. How did he get so wide open? I just looked up and he's streaming right down here in front of us. Well, he just turned on the jets and ran by his defender, really, over here on the near side. That's 35 is uh, Cam Willett. Took him right to the hoop and buried it. Looked like a trip on that play. No call. Whalers get the ball back. Here's Ben Lombardi with the far side. And they throw it away. Darren Duart can't control the pass. And Pope John Paul back on the break. Number three is Tim Jordan, their leading scorer. Wow. He shoots and scores. Or did 11 get that? I was looking down. It was 11. 11, 11 yes. from three. Wow. So John Paul in two quick rushes has the lead back in their favor here. The rest of our fine sponsors, Cottage and Castle, the Beauty Bar, Nantucket Electrical Contractors, Champion Rentals, the Steamship Authority, Nantucket Trees Landscaping, Highland Floor Finishing and Painting, Sun Island View, Cape Air, Billy Built Auto Repair, Fawcett Man, The Homestead, Ride the Wave, NRTA, Something Natural, BPC Architect, JP, 
JB Drywall Nantucket Health Department and uh, check out the new guy JB Drywall and if you want to be the new guy give me a call 508-292-2203 Got a whistle on the play. Coach Aloisi didn't understand or uh, believe that call. He gave, gave out a big what? Not sure what that call was. Uh, officials for today's game are Scott Froman and Chris Perry. Scott made that call from across the field. Chris asked him what the call was. We still don't know. I suspect a loose ball push. So let's see what the... The Saints can do with their set offense here, leading two to one early action here in the first. Well, a loss here today would devastate Nantucket in, in the pairings. And right Jason now, they're not playing around, well at all. Scores. Got it again. Unassisted. I'm sorry, that is Mike Sol Salkovich, I believe. Excuse me if I've pronounced your name in error. Uh, Salkovich, unassisted. Time of the goal, 9.09. Whalers opened the scoring at 11.35, but three unanswered goals by St. John Paul here, Dick. Turned this game right upside down right away. Yeah, not, uh, not the way Nantucket wanted to start this one. Face-off coming up. Face-off brought to us by Don Allen Auto Center. 30 miles closer to the same best deals. Don Allen Auto Center. New and used vehicles on sale out on Popus Road. Did you come up with that one, Dick? I did. Cameroni again up with the face-off. <laughs> It was probably in a phone book somewhere, Gino. I, right, I, I, like I didn't sit down and write it, no, if you meant that. But I, I, I say 30 miles at sea. We're, we're really not 30 miles at sea. The, the 30 miles at sea comes from when the boat used to leave Woods Hole and travel all the way across. We're, we're only about 17 miles if you go right across. Seriously? Is that yeah, right? Yes, yes. You mean from uh, Monomoy to Hi, Red Point? I'm talking high and to there Nantucket. Go. Nice play there. Gambaroni drove, drew the defenders, Duart popped around from behind the net, caught it, finished. So nice play by Gambaroni to set up so down. Duart a... makes it 3-2 to two at 8.35. So Gambaroni gets his first of the day. He had about six the last time we were here. Goal went to Duart. Assist oh, Duart, I'm saying. Gambaroni got the assist. Duart got the goal. That's a nice play, though. He drew three defenders. Darren popped right around the corner of the net and buried it over the keeper. That was an important goal for the Whalers to answer that quickly because... Uh, John Paul had scored three in a row, and uh, Nantucket had to an answer, and they did there nicely. Let's see if they can answer again to get the uh, equalizer here and get this one tied up again. So Austin Strong's been doing a good job with these face-offs, and there's Gambroni in again from the wing for the ground ball. Nice job. Gambroni wants to shoot. Puts it wide. A good look, but they couldn't get the ball on net. But Nantucket had the backup in place, so they uh, retained possession. Here's Duart now guarded by, I don't have a 20 in my program. Duart up with it. Nice roll dodge. Duart draws the defenders. Finds Small up top. Alex can't handle the pass. Drops the ball. Gambroni there. Duart sets a pick. Oh, Nantucket's not passing well today. Well, not catching that today, honestly, Dick. That pass wasn't that bad. Well, nice hustle by Terrain Burton there to come up from behind. Shoots the oh. score. Oh, what a great play by Burton. Goes and gets the ball, the takes it down, and buries it himself to tie the game at 734. Yeah, individual play there because Nantucket as a team is not looking good, but a couple of individual plays here and we got the game tied. That's all you can ask. So we've played uh, five, uh, five and a half minutes and uh, it's three to three. And, uh, you know, sort of like the, the uh, basketball players we watch and both teams have given each other a punch in. Now who's going to come out of it here? How about them Celtics? Oh, huh? boy. Great game last night, and bring on LeBron. I know. Oh, nice play. Joel McVicker. I want to make sure I get that name right today. Joel McVicker up with it. Oh, throws it away. Good play until the pass there. 
Do you think the Celtics can extend the uh, Cleveland series, Jeremiah? I or? sure hope so. You know how much I dislike that number 23 for Cleveland. And, uh, I sure hope the Celtics can give them a game. Well, I'm gonna, Why they can. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say they should use the formula of the old Celtics. I was brought up with the old Celtics, you know, the Russell era, the Cousy era. Way back, even before Larry Bird was born, you know, the Celtics were winning championships. And when the, the old Celtics of Russell and Cousy and uh, Havacek, uh, even before Havacek, Heinsohn, would go up against, say, like a, 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 an L.A. team would have Jerry West and Elgin, Elgin Baylor. They would, they would give... Elgin Bill and Jerry West, they're 35 points each. They wouldn't worry about stopping them. Let them score 70. But they would make sure the rest of the team only scored about another 20 to 25. They would defense the rest of the team, and they would beat them 100 to 94. And so what? Elgin got 35, Jerry West got 36, but they still whooped them. So what... LeJuan get his 35 points, but don't let the guys come off the bench and well, I score. I think you make a good point because the bench was a difference last night for the Celtics is how well they can do against the Cleveland's bench, you know. Cleveland's got some great role players, Corver, J.R. Smith, you know, you know, to go with shut the those, Shut those guys down. Don't worry about shutting James down because you can use a lot of energy to try to shut James down. But you can use less energy and shut some of those other guys down that want to get their 8 to 10 points. Let's hope home court advantage plays, in, uh, plays a role in the series. You know, it sure did in that Washington series. So I'm yeah. optimistic. We'll see how, uh, how the first I think games Celtics go. are going to win the first game. Well, that would be huge. That's, that's my prediction. If the Celtics win the first game, that's huge. Because then Cleveland has to win four out of six. Which Do it with another goal. Made the nice move to step around his defender. Put a good bounce shot past the keeper. Whalers back on top, four to three. Time of the goal, 5.43 in the first. That goal brought to us by Condon and Coleman Insurance, specializing in personal and commercial lines of insurance. Auto Home Marine Business, established 1931, down at 57 Main Street. Duarte's becoming a uh, force up in the front. He had four goals in uh, the game we did last week, and uh, right now today he's got two quick ones. Good production for a, uh, a freshman. Strong again on the faceoff. Battling number two, Dan Page. McVicker up with it. You notice, Gino. Know, nobody helping him. Somebody's got to move to get open here. He can't stand still. I got my Red Sox hat on, Gino, but look at the hat Jeremiah's going on down. That's the Houston Astros, Dick. You know that's my team. The Houston Astro hat. And I'm, I'm sort of in the. the Are they the, still around? They. they, <laughs> they have the best record in the major league right now. I'm, I'm, kidding. I'm happy with Houston because they went into Yank, the Yankee Stadium and won three out of four this weekend. So how can you not like a team that could wow. be? Wow. But they, 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 they didn't have the they didn't have the killer instinct. Well, they, they, had they the didn't win the lead in that first game of the doubleheader on Sunday, but wound up losing. Gave up 11 runs. The bullpen. They, uh, down. they 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 should have swept them. They should have swept them. They want to be champs. They got to go into Yankee Stadium and win all four. Alex Small with a great individual effort dodged about three guys. What's the call? I think they're, they're going to take the goal away. The net. How does it hit the back of the net from the front of the goal? Is what I want to know. So they're not going to that net for holes. They're going to take that goal away from Alex. So we got a penalty on St. John Paul. Number eight goes into the sin bin. That's Steve Previtt. He's in for a minute at 4.50. Let's see the Whalers do with their man up. So the spring season's winding down. The, uh, the boys uh, are already in the playoffs. Uh, the girls, I think, uh, right on the bubble. They need about one or two more victories. Softball, I think, needs one more victory. The baseball team, which, you know, Thought was out of it completely starting off the year 0 and 5. They, they've come back in there 5 and 7. They got about four more games to go, so I guess they got to win three out of four and they could squeeze into the playoffs. Duart again hits the post with that on a nice play from Gambroni. Alex up with the rebound. Back to Darren. JT at X. There's Terrain nice on top. Pass. Terrain shoots. That's how you score. do it, baby. Nice Burton from Gambaroni, time of the goal, 4 11. That's a man up goal, puts the Whalers back up by two. That was a uh, nice pass and a nice catch. 
uh, something that the Will has been having a hard time uh, doing earlier in this game here. And Terrain gets his uh, second of the game. So uh, it's amazing, Jeremiah. Five goals, four of them by freshmen. That's promising for the Whalers. It really is. And I think, and I don't know the, the seven names, you may know them, but I, I think there are seven kids that could have been on this team that have gone off to different schools. Which well, I can think of probably three or four off the top of which, my head. Which I brought this up when I had this conversation with Rick last, last time. If those, if he had seven, maybe four, maybe five, I don't know what the number is. But if those kids were here, maybe some of these freshmen aren't even getting time out on the field. <laughs> well, Chris and I were talking about that as well earlier. You know, those kids stay and we're, uh, you know, right back up there maybe in the sectional finals again like last year. But these things happen. Kids make decisions about their future that are best for themselves and their families. And uh, as a public school, we just, uh, we play the hand that we're dealt with our teams. Dick, you know all about that. No, uh, no drafting in public education, especially when you're on an island. <laughs> we cannot go out and recruit, no. All right, so St. John Paul in possession here. Ooh, what the heck? That's a nice check there. Who was that? It looked like it was over his face. 35 is... Yeah, Nantucket might have got away with a little slash to the Will chin. Out. Right, a little chinny chin chin action. St. John Paul back up with it. Coach calls Hopkins. Coach of the... Coach of St. John Paul is Dave Detchen. Detchens. They got some good players. I can see. Uh, oh, a nice pass there. Bad Ooh, shot. Goes wide, hits the official. Is Willette up with it? Takes it himself right down the middle. Nice play. Gets it to Duart. That's one way to check the play, just go up and talk to each other. <laughs> Cambroni sets a pick, Small fakes the pass, goes around, shoots and scores. Oh nice play, gosh. Alex, all the way in, puts it over the goalie's shoulder, make it 6-3 Whalers. So Whalers went down 3-1, 5 unanswered here, Dick, to get a 3-goal lead. Yeah, and uh, that's Alex's second goal. So we have three, three players with each two goals apiece. And uh, as you say, five unanswered goals. And there's still two minutes to go here in the first period. We're here on a beautiful, and I, I hate to say it, we might jinx it, sunny day. I know. It's still a little windy, though. I mean, you know. A little bit of wind. Yeah. But, Gino, if you think about the last time we're here, no, if you think about the last, at the softball game the other day, Jeremiah, Gino uh, did us a big favor. Me and Dennis were getting set up. With, it was that windy Thursday last week. It was wicked, wicked over at the softball field. We're setting up. We're trying to get the two vehicles, my vehicle and Gino's vehicle, blocking the, blocking the wind. And, and we finally thought we had it set up. And then, and then the game is delayed a little bit because the boat got in a few minutes late. They, they had to pull a boat off the rocks. And so the warm-up, so it wasn't going to start the 415. So me and Dennis get in my truck. And all of a sudden, Gino said, you guys can stay there if you want. <laughs> I thought I was in heaven. We sat, we, we sat in the truck, and we did the game from the truck. It was unbelievable. How about that? The mobile broadcast. <laughs> it was right in the Gino game wagon. Gino was outside, sitting on the chair, and uh, me and Dennis sat There's in the truck. One. JT Gambroni, a nasty dodge at X. Leaves his defender practically on the ground. Comes around and shoots it right over top of the goalie. Makes it 7-3 to three at 142. Well, John Paul has no answer for the Nantucket offense. They, they, they have an offense of their own. They have some good players, but uh, as soon as Nantucket gets the ball down this end of the field, uh, John Paul has no answer for them whatsoever. They, uh, they are scoring at will. Now it's six unanswered goals. Nantucket had that little hiccup letting John Paul score three in a row, but uh, right now John Paul cannot answer the Nantucket offense. 
That goal was brought to us by Island Lumber. Rock solid, Wheel of Pride, Island Lumber, serving the island for over 50 years. Oh, he's kicking his cross there. That could have been called. Ooh. Jeez. That was a Two wild swing with the stick. stick. It should have been good, called. Good thing that kid wasn't uh, a little bit closer to him coming behind. Good thing uh, the scorekeeper, Gina, didn't get whacked with that I one. Know, she, she took a, she that was, was a long stick, and it just missed hitting two people. Eddie Davidson up with a nice check. Oh, loses it out of bounds. <clears throat> John Paul needs an answer here. We're down to the final minute of the first period. This is where they have had a little success coming out from behind the net. Right now Nantucket's defending a lot better. Good well, play by Davison. Cicino over there. McVicker up with it. Oh, a nice backhand pass, Australian style. Up with it is Ben Lombardi for the Whalers. Takes it into the zone, touches it in. Burton now. Turns on the Jets, goes right by his defender, shoots it, bounces over. Boy, he's got a nice first step, doesn't he, Dick? He was by that defender before the defender realized yeah, what he, was going he, on. Yeah, he is... He is going to be an excellent athlete in three sports. I mean, I seen him play football this year. I seen him play basketball and now lacrosse. And you know, you hope he he matures and stays here for the four years because he could be one of the best at all three of those sports. McVicker with the interception heaves it downfield, and that's the end of the first period with the score on the field: your Nantucket Whalers seven, the St. John Paul Saints three. Getting ready for second period uh, action here. Got Nantucket Wheels with a 7-3 to three lead. And that includes the last six goals. As, uh, they've turned up the offense, and uh, John Paul doesn't seem to have any, uh, any uh, answer for that, Jeremiah. Well, we were having some uh, lapses on defense there. A few breakdowns led to some of those easy goals. But once we've had the possession, we've pretty much been able to do what we want to on offense, Dick. The second period portion is brought to us by Fairgrounds, where friends meet. Check out the sports bar tomorrow night. The uh, Celtics will be opening up against the Cleveland Cavaliers. The defending NBA champion, Cleveland Cavaliers. Defending champs, and uh, they certainly, uh, it's an oddity with the Celtics being the number one finisher, Cleveland being the number two finisher. You'd have to scratch your head and, and wonder when's the last time that the, the two seed would be favored going into the, the playoffs against the one seed, you know, usually the other way around. But you well, have the one and two in the uh, Western Conference also. Well, you make a good point. Cleveland won the season series during the regular season three games to one. So I remember that last game back uh, end of the regular season, though, that they blew us out at home. So we'll see. Let's hope the home court pays off. It sure did last night against Washington. Now, what... Uh why did, why did Cleveland lose the, the, the one seed? I mean, Well, they rested all their guys. I mean, they the did a lot of rested, resting. Tyree rested. They, they didn't play in a bunch of games there, and the Celtics finished strong. You know, couple, couple really a couple of injuries? Do they have a couple of injuries, too, down the, down the line? Or just resting? Mainly? Well, J.R. Smith was out for a while. When he came back, Corver started playing well. So, I mean, they're really dangerous on offense. The Whalers are very dangerous on offense wow. here today, too. Nice play there by number 11, Gil Bach. That's his second goal of the game. Walked right around Natty Davidson. That's a shock. Don't usually see Natty get beat off the drive like that. So 7-4, to four, time of the goal, 10-51. So John Paul breaks the Nantucket uh, string of uh, six goals in a row. Last time uh, John Paul scored, they scored another two quick ones right after that. Let's hope that doesn't happen unless we have ourselves a... Uh, Another close one right now. Nantucket still up by three with a little hiccup there. Let's see if they can answer that with their own goal. Well, there's been dominant so far at the faceoff X. One reason we've had so many offensive possessions. Nice job by Strong on the faceoff, and there's Burton. Good job. Strong's been doing great on the faceoffs today. 
Now, I'm noticing on the face-off, is, is it just me or is it a little bit longer today with the, with the official getting the ball set between the two face-off people? Oh, you mean between it? So he'll call set and then the players can't move, but he wants to vary the amount of time between set and the whistle so that they don't anticipate the face. So he's, he's, he's not talking to them in other words. He's not telling them a joke no, or nothing. once he says set, they can't move. Yeah. What do you tell two guys down there going for the face-off? <laughs> Did you hear the one about? <laughs> nice play by Small affects that pass. Oh, it's it's a lacrosse player, a, a, a rabbi, and a, a, a cat walking to a bar. Did you ever hear that one? No, Jim. <laughs> you making this up? <laughs> That's as far as I can go. Okay. On here, I'll tell you off here. All right. I'll wait to hear that. All right, so St. John Paul into their set offense now. That's Jennison with the ball. Oh, nice play by Burton. Oh, and look at him just shift it into high gear and blow right by those two guys. Now nope. he's got 15, 20 yards on him, and the Whalers have a fast break. Nice pass. Finds Gamberoni on the crease. JT fakes the pass. Oh, pulls it out. I thought, I thought Burton should have went a little further on that before the pass. Maybe he... Uh... I think if he kept going, the, the, it would have just opened right up for him there. Well, he saw JT in there on the crease. He thought maybe he could get a quick goal for the defense recover. But I think you're right. He could have driven right down the middle, had a shot himself. Oh, nice play there. That goal goes to number four, Darren Duart. He's got the hat trick. Duart unassisted, walked right around and bounced it past the keeper at 8.55. Makes it 8-4. to four. So no, nice play there by uh, Duart. And as you say... Another one on the score sheet for him. That goal and face off brought by Santos Rubbish Removal. We cover the islands. Good luck, Wheelers. How do you think that conversation went in the Duart home when he had to tell his dad that he wasn't playing baseball? Yeah, that, uh, that uh, is always difficult. <laughs> always difficult. And his dad being a, uh, a baseball coach for many years, right. the assistant coach under Artel for quite a few years and then taking over when Artel uh, retired and uh, was head coach. Oh, nice catch there, number 11, but he can't hold it on the dodge. But finishing that story with a funny twist, uh, Jeremiah, is uh, one of the assistant coaches uh, this year up there was, was one of Nikki's best friends in high, in high school and, and out of high school, uh, Kenny Howard. No kidding. Kenny came aboard as an assistant coach this year for the first time. Nice job by Bartlett there on the clear. Whaler's in possession now. Here's Duart up to Small. Burton now. Lombardi. Harnischweger with it on the far side. Gambroni sets a pick. Harnischweger back to JT. If you look at John Paul's defense, a lot of standing around here. And Nantucket makes that one quick move and, and gets an open shot a lot. Big I'll save the there. The save. That's the first save of the game so far. That's going to be number 10, Brian Hyde is the keeper. Neither yeah, goalie with a save yet. That was the first one. I don't know if he saw that, but it hit him right in the chest on the bounce. <laughs> McVicker, nice job to shut down the driving lane, deflects the pass. The timeout on the field called by St. John Paul, 7.15 left in the second, 8-4 to four Whalers. I'd like to mention some of our fine sponsors while this timeout. Gino, if you shoot the roof of the school up there, you can see them working on the roof. See, I, I, way at the far end there. Right on the auditorium roof. Auditorium roof. Some fine sponsors for the Whalers, Congan & Coleman Insurance, Killen mm -hmm. Real Estate, Nantucket Pharmacy, Island Pharmacy, Santos Rubbish Remover, Harborfield Oil Corporation, Nantucket Airline, Peter Beat and Hat Studio, Pete's Fresh Fish Prints, the UPS Store, Nantucket Booster Club, Greg Rath Builder, Nantucket Tackle Center, the Downey Flake, Sherbin Management, Brock Insurance, the Sea Grill, Don Allen Auto Center, Rick's Paint and Maintenance, 
Cavalier Gallery, Ladybird Lingerie, Joe Rapaki CPA, Island Lumber, Martin Bork Painting, Cowboys Meat Market, Stova Engineering, Cam Appliance, Island Carpet, the Island to Package Store, Connor Electric, Valero & Sons Garden Center, Expresso to Go, Fast Forward, Nantucket Seafood, Hathorn Guest House, Rider Electric, Nantucket Shellfish Association, Kitty Murtaugs, Nantucket Boys and Girls Club, Outdoor Power, Just Do It 2 Sport Fishing, The Dog Wash, Fairgrounds Restaurant, Boathouse Restaurant, Cottage and Castle, The Beauty Bar, Nantucket Electrical Contractors, Champion Rentals, Nantucket Trees Landscaping, Sun Island Fuel, Cape Air, Billy Built Auto Repair, Faucet Man, The Homestead, Ride the Wave, NRTA, Something Natural, and the new guys aboard, BPC Architect, JB Drywall, Nantucket Health Department. If you too want to be the new guy aboard, give Gino a call, 508-292-2203, and become a proud sponsor of Wheel of Sports. Playoffs coming up. Get aboard. So let's see what they call the timeout here. St. John Paul with possession, moving the ball around, running some cutters through the middle. They need a goal hit, Jeremiah, to keep this game alive for them. There's that cutter in the middle. Nice catch by 12. Oh, Shoots it wide. Close. That's Cal Ticino. Seven with the pass was Rich Mulcahy. Eleven behind the goal is uh, Gil Bach. He's got two goals for them. Bach drives on McVicker, rolls back. Nice play by Keegan to step out of the cage and turn that drive around. Ball's out of bounds. Possession goes to the whale. There's Burton with it. And there's that first step and he's gone. Yeah, they have no answer for that at all. You can't teach speed. <laughs> Finds Lombardi. Shoots it wide. He had a couple more feet. He could have stepped in and gotten a little closer shot, but ripped it side on and went wide. I hate those sidearm shots. You've heard me yelling that for so many years, Dick. Not as much control. Right. As much accuracy as when you go overhand, but the kids love it because it looks good on TV. And they are on TV today. <laughs> I try to tell them it only looks good when it goes in the back of the net. <laughs> you got it. The lacrosse team heads off island. They got away games against Sturgis, Charter, Falmouth Academy, and then a couple of makeup games. I don't know if they have another home game. This is the last home game on the regular season. On the schedule, regular season. There is a makeup, Dick. Yeah. Nice play, McVicker, to goose it back over the line. You allowed to sticky stick over like that, huh? Sure, as long as your feet don't cross the line. Flag on the play, delayed call against the Whalers. Tim Jennison with it. Yep, he stepped outside the box. Oh. Yeah, they wanted to get a shot on that, and uh, he doesn't by uh, stepping outside. But they're going to be a man up here. We're going to be at the basketball game a week. I mean, not the basketball game, the softball game a week from today. Uh, as the girls uh, be trying to get a uh, home game. Next Tuesday, they'll be going against Monomoy, Gino. The, okay. So on the 23rd, that'll be a good one. As uh, That will be a good one. It could be a battle for first place in the league. As Monomoy, uh, I think, has beaten us on the road this year. So we'll try to answer that back. As the softball team will be playing their final game against Monomoy next Tuesday. So the penalty's on Ben Lombardi. One minute for a slash. Let's see what St. John Paul does with the man up. They run that wheel play. Oh, almost a flag there. Yep, Chris got it. That's a hit on the head. Well, you want to take your shot soon here so you get the ball back with a two-man advantage. The longer they hold it, the less time they'll have with a two-man advantage here. That's a good oh, point. That's a good point, ball. right? All right. So the ball's down. Whistle will blow. And now Natty Davidson will go off for an apparent hit on the head. Let's see what the call is. The up and coming, uh, what did you get, Jeremiah? We got one minute hit on the head. So John Paul's power play will be brought to us by Island Pharmacy, 122 Pleasant Street. Prescriptions filled, health and beauty aids, Island Pharmacy. So St. John Paul with a six on four advantage here for about 29 seconds. Burton blows it right up though, look at him. Takes the ball, good call coach. 
Great play by Burton. Smart call by Coach. Gets his time out here with the Whalers in possession. So there's a break in the action with the score eight to four, your Whalers. Portions of this game brought to us by Nantucket Pharmacy, 45 Main Street, Downtown, Island Pharmacy, 122 Pleasant Street, Mid-Island, Nantucket Pharmacy, 45 Main Street, Downtown. Both offer you prescriptions, nutrition, beauty products, magazines, lottery, Nantucket Island Pharmacies. So the uh, college lacrosse, uh, some big games this past weekend. Duke destroyed John Hopkins. Did they? I, I watched part I of the Syracuse-Yale game. That's about the only one I saw. That's the only score I didn't see. Who won that Syracuse one? Syracuse won that one. Yale gave them a heck of a game, though. They, did, they didn't have that score on the paper again today. I was kind of kind of wondering why they didn't put it in there. Because they, the they had all the other scores in there. They didn't have that one. So I, was I was too busy watching my Astros clean house on the Bronx Bombers this weekend. <laughs> Yeah, some of the other some of the other scores. Uh, Albany beat uh, Carolina 15 to 12. Denver beat Air Force 17 to 10. As I say, Duke destroyed John Hopkins 19 to 6. I that 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 just score jumps out of me. Townsend beat Penn State 12 to 8. Maryland over Bryant 13 to 10. Notre Dame over Marquette 15 to 9. That's pretty impressive. Ohio State in a real nail biter. Over Loyola, oh, Maryland, seven. That was a great game. Seven to four. That was the, the the real low score game. So now Ohio State will go against uh, Duke. That's going to be a good one. Notre Dame against Denver, Maryland against Albany, and Townsend will take on Syracuse. Does it say when are those Thursday Saturday games? Or are they uh, Saturday? Saturday uh, the Ohio State Duke Notre Dame game, and then Sunday Maryland Albany Townsend uh, oh, okay. Syracuse. Oh, that should be a flag. There yep, we go. There so Burton with a great job. Not only does he clear the ball, but he draws a penalty. Now JT's trying to run the clock down, but he runs in, scores an unassisted goal. What a great move by Gambaroni. Unassisted goal. Uh, and that one was two men down. Unbelievable. Does that cancel the penalty? It cancels the... No, it doesn't. But they've got a penalty on them, so let's see what the call is. So that was a six on five. The first penalty had just expired by a few seconds. Uh, and 18 doesn't have to go in the box then because of no, the goal. Because we scored when the flag was down. All right. right. So that eliminates that penalty. But Pope John Paul is still up for another 26 seconds here. They're up one man, six on five. And we have 4.25 to go in the first half. And Nantucket now has a nine to four lead. Now Ethan Farrell went on to play at, what was it, Lynch, Lynchburg? Lynchburg, he was a captain for two years actually. They've, uh, they've won two games in... Uh, in the Division Three tournament, they beat Swanee 14 to 12, and then they beat uh, York 10 to 8. They'll be going against Denison tomorrow night. Uh huh. Yeah, I know Ethan's been out for several years now. He played some club ball up in Vermont, and then uh, like a pro indoor league in uh, Canada as well. That score? No, oh, outside of the net. Okay. So St. John Paul. Oh, oh what a great right interception the there. Cam Willett comes up with it. What Whaler's on a fast break. Duart, oh, oh, can't make the pass over to Gambroni. Yeah, he had the right idea there, and he sees JT wide open in front of the net. He just couldn't get him the ball. Pretty sloppy passing by Pope John Paul here, throwing it away. You said indoor lacrosse up in Canada? That must oh, be yeah. a, that has a to be a rough, rough game. Rough game, let me tell you. <laughs> and the goals are the size of hockey goals, so that... Uh, the goalies are all bent over and wear hockey pads. Really? Yeah. That must be, that must be a slap shot without, without skates. <laughs> One of my it's favorite movies of all time. It's fast and it's rough. Where did you see it? 
On the internet or on TV? Well, no, it's always been played. They call it box lacrosse. Oh. Uh, back in the day, now it's called indoor lacrosse. Have you, either of you two guys seen the movie Slapshot? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That, that, has to be, that has to be what box lacrosse is all about then. <laughs> all right, so both teams are full strength here. Penalties are expired. Whalers killed the two penalties, and they scored a man down goal. So nice job by man down there. Burton especially with a nice play to break up the play and uh, clear the ball. St. John Paul content to work it around the perimeter, not much penetration. Trying to get a cutter open, but couldn't connect with that pass. And Tucker's got him uh, a better answer for them now on defense. That was a bad pass. Well, that's a set play. They run that pick and they're supposed to pop it back to the guy who set the pick, but like you said, a weak pass there. And up with it is small. Takes a couple hits, keeps Ooh. on going. Burton in, shot Man. score. Lombardi from number 20, Ty Harnischweger. Give Harnischweger the assist on Lombardi's first goal of the day. Time 159 makes it 10 to four. So Ben gets into the uh, scoring sheet there for the Whalers. That goal brought to us by Nantucket Airlines. We're all about the islands. Give them a call, 228-6234, Nantucket Airlines. Okay, Brony gets pushed, no call. Saints up with it. Now it's Davidson running with him. Gambroni comes over to try and push him out. Now it's sunny here, Gino. Is it still snow up in Maine? Up, no. Up where, no, no, it's all melted up there? Yeah. <laughs> Must be black fly season here pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. You know it's warmer there than here. Right now. Ooh, that was a hit to the head. No call. No call. Called it a brush. Oh, yeah. It's a penalty, yeah. Can't do that. I didn't see what he did. How he did said he... drop the ball and he threw no, it. No, I saw that, but what did he do to get the call? What did he do? How did he pick the ball up in his head? No, no, no. The the, it's Chris Perry stopped play and asked for the ball. Right, but yeah, why but did he stop the play? I don't, I don't know. He I don't... You can't do that with the ball. Right. All I saw was him pick it up. Did he pick it up with his hand or something? I don't know. I understand the penalty. So Biggs is out for 30 seconds, but I don't understand what the original call was. He pick it up with his hand somehow. I think that's. I think you're right there, Jeremiah. Right. He wouldn't have gotten the penalty for that though until he. No, did it. it was just a simple technical change of possession there until he threw the ball. Shot goes wide from the long stick. Powerful nope. shot, but uh, not on net. Looked like a long stick. That's 18. Is uh, Deron Harding. So Biggs is back in, ends a penalty, no harm. Oh, good stop there. First save of the day for Downey. Here's Burton, watch him turn on the Jets. There he goes, runs right by. Oh, can't oh. connect with Duart. Darren gets it checked. Ball again, still, that's a push from behind. Again, his speed opened up a couple of guys open right on, around the net. He's just going to connect the pass, but Nantucket turns it over here and Nantucket arguing Mr. it, but Perry they're not. admits his mistake. Ball was not out of bounds. That's unfortunate for the Whalers. Might have got a good shot there. Five seconds left in the half. Oh, great check by oh. Burton in the back. Good job by Burton to keep the shot wide. So we have played one half here at the Vito Capizzo Stadium. It's Nantucket 10, John Paul 4.